Okay, welcome everyone. This is the Socks Will Show Market Review. The SPY here, going to review the SPY. The SPY gap down today. Did I think that would get, we would gap down? No, I didn't think we gap down today at all. When I saw the way that we closed yesterday and held so bullishly, I never thought we'd gap down today. But I did think that nothing that we would do this week would be bearish. I thought that we would gap neutral or up to yeah, this morning. I thought we would break higher than uh, possibly today with a neutral gap or a bullish gap up. But then I woke up this morning, I saw the gap down. And I really, really, really did all my work. I actually wasn't planning on doing anything with the market. I wasn't going to short the market. I wasn't going to go long the market. I wasn't rating the market gap to play the market gap. But I did rate the market gap today because I wanted to see if I missed something. But I didn't. Because when I looked at this, I said, boy, this is unusual. And I really didn't think this would gap down like this. Because we actually did gap down quite a lot. We closed at 20 no yeah we closed at 20805 and we gapped down 20437 we gapped down almost $4 i mean we did gap down this morning so i needed to check the gap and it did not rate well so that i knew it would hold and so far it is and actually it was holding a little bit better this morning but we're still going to hold Broke the low here, but this is too late in the day to break to have the follow through lower. Therefore, it's not going to break today. The one thing I did say this morning is if we break hard early in the first five minutes, we're going to fall today. And even if we do, we're going to fall into an area. No matter how big it is, we're going to close today with a massive tail that will get bought. The only way to have a red body today, I said, is if we have a small range day, small or medium more likely small than medium, and that's probably what's going to play out and could even be green because we were green this morning, went over the high, rallied all morning up through past 10 o'clock, and I thought we fake lower in the morning. We never did. Again, another sign of strength. But I did think the shorts would come in. They are, but they're not controlling the market. They're not going to win today. They're not going to win in the market, and this proves everything as well. You have the shorts playing against here, not selling, not institutional selling, or this wouldn't look like this. So you had shorts that came into the market, even I think last night in the gap. And I don't know what went on exactly last night. I didn't see what time this happened. Actually, let's look and see what time this did happen here. Um, no, it did happen this morning. I was just checking to see if it happened last night. No, this was a morning gap. It wasn't that big this morning, though. Here, look. It was only at 2.06. See, this is what where we were. See, th this is all shorting. That's why this isn't going anywhere, by the way. See here, we just, we gapped this morning here. This is where we were at 6 a.m. And people got all excited and on the bandwagon and then wanted to short. But this isn't institutional selling or it wouldn't look like this. We'd be down here already. It's almost 11 o'clock. And I'm not going to call this as a long. I'm just not going to call this as a long here. But by golly, this is a place to go long the market. And I don't tell people to buy bullish. I don't tell people to go long bearish gaps. But I kind of thought this morning that it kind of was and it kind of is and it basically is. <laughs> but I just, that's not the right way to buy. It's This is not the way right to buy the market. But the fact is this is a buy point for people. It keeps getting bought. It's going to continue to get bought. And I really thought this could have just power trended all day. It's not. It broke the low. It's still not going anywhere and will actually go over the high. And market could close green today. Despite the gap down, it's another sign of strength. There's nothing this market can do to be bearish. I can't think of anything that could conceivably happen that would make me think the market's bearish. I just described to you that this morning when if the market actually fell today, it would make a massive tail down and get bought and lift on top of itself on the live day. That's not even going to happen. It's not even going to play out that way, but it could have. It might have. I set it out there as a scenario. If the market had fallen today hard and fast and furiously, it would have made a massive tail and got bought immediately somewhere on the live day. So this market's continuing higher and it's going to get bought in. It's going to stop out the shorts and I don't know where. It didn't happen over the high. More shorts came in. Will it happen over the high again? Some people will give it up then. Will it happen over 205, 206? I don't know. I don't know, but the market's higher and still could possibly make a new high this week. And I don't know where we gap tomorrow, but I will say that if we close green today above 206, we'll probably gap up tomorrow. And that will probably take us over a new high. I don't even know if it matters anymore. The market's still higher. 
Someone asked me yesterday, how do, two people did ask me yesterday. Gordon in the Wealth Manifestation class, who's not here today, asked me, how do you know the market's higher? And then somebody else, I forget who, oops, um, asked me, somebody emailed me, Tom emailed me, how did I know the market was higher? He does futures, he does the ETFs and he wants to do the class and he wants to use it for futures and I said I never train in futures but he does ETFs and wants to know about that and is he wanted to know how do I know the market's higher. The only the best explanation I can give you for how I know the market's higher is because I know how to read gaps and I got up this morning and I trade bearish gaps and I rated the gap and I rated the gap per the 26 point rating system and it didn't rate good enough to short and that's how I knew it wasn't going to fall through to the downside and it didn't and it's not and it's not going to and it's not. And this, this is the simplest thing that I can possibly say. Forget about the fact that I've been great at calling numbers this hasn't hit as far as targets. I'm reading the gaps. And no bearish gap in here has had any solidarity to it to have the follow through red. And every bullish gap has been beautiful, even if they actually close red. So I don't know what else to say anymore. By the end of today today, it's going to, if the market closes today over 206 on the gap down this morning, which it probably is going to, it, it's just, it, it'll be shocking to me that people would short this market still, but people will. I know that they will because they want to. That's why they will. Sometimes people want to do things and it doesn't make any sense. And there's nothing that you can say to make them change their mind. So there's no point in it. But the things that I'm saying make sense. You can see how the market's getting bought here. It's getting bought right now. This second live at 1050, you can see the market lifting and getting bought. It's not, it's being supported. This market is being supported. It's being supported with buying. This wouldn't look like this. Look. <clears throat> now something made the gap down, but it was people that want to try to come in to short this market. And there is people actually with money that want to short because they aren't on the right side of things and don't have the right information and could push the market down or it wouldn't have gap like that. So there, you don't have everyone exactly on the same side. What you need to be able to read is the people that are really, really, really making the moves. And I think it's easy for me to read, but the thing is that sometimes you get tripped up. Today was a good example even in the gap. It worked. I kept the conviction. I held it. Same thing with the market, but I'm always double, triple checking myself. I never get so, so crazy that I don't check myself because you have to do that constantly with the market to make sure that you didn't miss anything. We could have held even more bullish than this this morning. I thought at one point we would. I said that I can't, this is like crazy how well we're holding, but we're back up where we were. I said that here, we're back up against it. We're back up again to rally over 205. We're back where I said this is ridiculously beautiful. And we're back up there again now, and look how well it held. So it's just, this is all new money coming in out here again today. New money coming in out here again today to support the market. This isn't short covering. It's not short covering. You don't, you don't have any shorts in here that are up. Do you get what I'm saying here? The short covering would not hold the market and, uh, hold the market low here and the gap down. Does everyone here, people that are in the room, do you get here? This is very important, actually. This is buying. Now, I talk all the time about the difference between what something looks like when it's selling or shorting or buying or covering. This is buying. Do you get what I'm saying here? You don't have shorts in here that would be looking to cover at this point because they just made the gap because they want the follow through to get it down to 200 or beyond because they think the market's crashing. Therefore, this green that you're seeing, the lift, the lift and the low, the support of the low of the day here that's carrying it through and hitting up over the high and it's already done. It's going to do it again. This is real buying because you wouldn't have this be short covering because you don't the shorts in to cover because they would be looking to cover here because they just got in. Does this you understand what I'm saying here? This is very important. This is how I know what I'm saying is correct. This is real money that's coming in. It's buying. This is the market is being bought. Okay, that's why it looks like it does. That's why it keeps making new highs. That's why it will make a new high. That's why the gaps are even happening in the first place and falling through to the upside, not to the downside. No downside gap. 
has ever held in this market. It is not holding. They are not holding. You cannot short any of the bearish gaps in this market. There's nothing that this market can do to be bearish this whole week and probably the rest of the year. And I don't think it's going to next year either. And you know, I don't even know how I know this, but I'm telling you right now that the market is going to rally all of 2015. And not only that, the market is going to have probably the most mullish year it's ever, ever had. And I can't give you the explanation other than what I said yesterday in the wealth manifestation class. I did say one thing that was, I just didn't realize at the time. And then I just said it and I realized it when I said it then. You have patterns that happen and set up in things. And you rely on those patterns and you play them. However, Patterns sometimes can change. And if you're not aware of that and don't know how to read a change in a pattern when it sets up or happens, then you will err or lose. Because the fact is that nothing goes on forever, it just doesn't. And nothing goes on forever, meaning not the move itself per se, but the pattern follow through, okay? So just because the market has rallied umpteen times and been extended like this and therefore dropped and fell, however many times it has in its life, which I can't even say that, it doesn't mean it's going to. Like, people are actually saying, people are actually saying that because we've had this rally here, we're going to have a massive fall off because we did something similar back here. This is part of the uh, intellectual process thought why people are saying this is going to collapse. And they think it's going to be bigger than this collapse because the rally here is bigger than this rally. So people are saying, I believe that the pattern is going to repeat itself or the market had a massive rally and a huge crash. And they're saying it even more so because the rally here, which you can see, was bigger than this rally here. And therefore, they believe it's going to crash. But what I'm telling you is that it patterns change in reference to this here. If you're looking at what I just explained, which I'm not, because I'm reading the line price action and the gap, which is not a pattern, although gaps can have patterns, but price action itself actually, when line price action itself can create a new pattern. Listen, this is very important what I'm saying here right now. I am reading line price action every second when I look at something. Even if it's not live and it's flat, which I see on the weekends and I see some things very clearly on weekends, I'm reading it, the price, which is not a pattern of moving averages or even candlestick formations. It's the price action that I'm reading. The candlestick shows you live moving price and formulates the price. But the price, the number, the number, how did I know that Con was going to hold today at that number where it double bottom and did the lift? It was within one penny of the number that I gave you. How did I know that? Because I read the price. The price is the only thing is 100% reliable. So if you were playing and calling the market to crash because of this prior pattern that happened, Although, is there a chance it could repeat itself? Yes, of course it could. Patterns do sometimes repeat themselves, but not always. Why? Because things change, and you have to be aware of that. And that's why you have to learn how to read real life price action. And if you can't do that, you will not be able to make a living as a trader. And you could be in the market and do lots of different things with your life, but you can not hit it big and make the big time if you can't read live price action, and you must. And that's how I know this is new buying and it's new money, and I just explained to you why. And we're going to make a new high right now. Justin's bringing up a good point. He says it's going to correct itself first. Justin, this is the correction. This is the correction. Justin, do you, I just told you the market gap down $3.5 this morning. What do you want? If you want to buy, you could buy today if you missed it. That This is the correction. If you want, you're saying I want a correction. This is it, Justin. This is a pull-in. This is it. This is it. You had opportunity in here, and you're having it again today. This is it. This is the correction. Do not expect the market to come to 200. That isn't happening. It is not going to happen. I would be shocked if that happened. It is not going to happen. Uh, let me just see what everybody's running here. Braulio, you need to use a different ECN. I don't know what you're using, but you have to use a good ECN for your fills and stops. 
no, it's not going to happen because this is a new bind. But, but this is a correction of sorts because you had some people taking profits and you had the sh really the shorts coming in this morning. Listen to what I'm saying. Just because something pulls into support often for a correction. <sighs> Wrong. No. Something does not have to act the same way all the time. I don't know why anyone would ever think that. Something does not have to act the same way all the time. Things change, and you must accept that in the market. And that's why you have to accept that sometimes you'll like something, take a trade, and it won't work. How do you explain that? How do you listen to what I'm saying? This is just common sense. If every single pattern recognition worked every single time, 100%, without failure, then no one would ever lose money in the market. And everyone would play the same pattern all the time forever and ever 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 and ever. It's not the way it works. That is not the way it works. But I will tell you one thing. There is one pattern in the market in the stock market itself that holds the most weight, it's a, it's a diamond. It's a piece of gold like a diamond that is invaluable. You can't put a price on it, and it's gaps. And it's what I figured out in gaps that I taught you. And that's why I called it a golden gap, and that is the best name I could have ever come up for that thing. I called it, I called it, I called it, I called it a diamond gap. It, there, that is, it's because of the way to read the price in the gap. That's why the gaps are important. If every pattern repeated itself and was playable for profit, then no one would lose. If every time something rallies, it comes in to support to get bought at the place that XYZ thinks. Like, I just read the letter yesterday. I just read you the letter yesterday. Everyone in the world, everyone in the world probably thinks the market's coming down to 200. I don't think that's happening. I think today when we get up tomorrow morning, guess what? This is going to look different. This right here, this thing that's made by a computer, the 50 period movement average is going to look like this. And this is part of where people get the number two. It's going to be higher. Why? Because we came down today and we squished ourselves to make a sandwich more. This is going to lift. When the market gaps up tomorrow, this is going to lift even more. And the market that rallies over the high is going to lift even more. And then this number isn't going to be here. This is made by a computer. This is a computer generated line averaging in the price. This is not a price where the market's trading. The market is not trading here. The market doesn't ever have to go back here again. And I'm not saying it's never going to go back there again, but I'm saying it doesn't have to. This isn't going to be here tomorrow. It's going to have lifted. And if the market gaps up, when you get up, up it's going to have lifted even more. <clears throat> it's not even about probability. It's about accuracy. Forget the probability. You could find a mathematical genius, hire him, pay him all kinds of money to figure out mathematical. Do you know how many people that try to figure out the market based on mathematical probabilities of things happening? There are geniuses, and I'm talking mathematical geniuses, okay, that work on algorithms for probabilities for things to follow through and set up correctly and work in the market. And they still lose. It is not about probabilities. It is about accuracy. And there's one really, really important thing that is required to trade that you need accuracy. You have to read something in live time and take your ego out of the equation. And I am really good at doing that. I sat all morning and looked at this market gap. And I took my ego out of the equation. And it's not coming in. You have to step back, look at the live price action, read it accurately, and take your ego out of the equation. And if you cannot do that, you're going to just stay stuck in insisting something's X, Y, Z. Great call here. I made the market to hold today. And the market's going to hold. And I don't know where. And I don't know where it closes. And I don't know if it rallies here into 12 o'clock or fakes slower again and then holds again. But I know the market's getting bought today because I can see it. I know this isn't short covering because there's not enough people in here. Might be a little bit of the people from the morning, but not the people that made the gap because the gap did come down quite a bit from last night. It did come down. There was a real gap down last night of three and a half dollars where shorts try to take over the market and they're not going to win because the people that are controlling the market are the bulls. It's new money coming in today and from since before. The market will continue to lift higher and I don't know where we gap tomorrow morning, 
but this is very tricky. The gap down this morning and where we close, we'll have a lot to do with everything. We'll look at it at 4 o'clock. We'll look at it tomorrow morning. You've got to take your ego out of the equation and read stuff in live price. I'm willing to do that. If I make a mistake, I'm willing to look at what it is. I haven't erred in the market at all. Not the whole, whole year. I don't even know. I might not have even aired last year, but I paid more attention to the market this year than ever because of the fact that people kept calling it to crash even in March. I remember doing a webinar and someone was talking about the market crashing. Where were we even then? I don't even remember. And I said even then we were higher. It was March of this year. I remember doing a webinar with some place. Here. In March. It's a webinar online and I, the market videos are there. We rallied 20 some points over this, well, 15 something over this number, almost 20 points over this number. We rallied in March and I said we're higher in March of this year. In 2014, I said we were higher. Look at what we've done since then. But I said it before that too, but I'm just saying, yeah. If you, if you learn nothing from me, you have to learn how to read stuff live and take your ego out of the equation. I'm, you just got to. What do you have to lose? This isn't about being right. It's about making money. I'm not making any money right now here in the QQ. Here's a spy. I'm not in this. I think that's one of the reasons I'm reading it well, too. If the market falls, it's fine. I short all day long. And the market rallies, I'm riding the call. So to me, I can't lose either way. There's nothing that I can do to lose in this. If the market falls off the planet, my business is going to blow up because everyone in the world is going to know how to short. And most people have no clue how to short a thing. And I am great at shorting. And there isn't anyone better than me at shorting. And that's why you should listen to what I have to say about the market. I know what weakness looks like. I'm the most bearish person that trains on the planet ever, okay? Even institutions don't really like to short. You do know that, don't you? They don't really like to short. They'd much rather buy. It's much easier for them to take long positions than short positions. They sell when they get out of something. I, I, you know, I'm an anomaly. There's not many people that are doing what I do and I even how to do it. Even institutions that I'm playing against are selling the stuff and I'm shorting it. Most institutions like to buy stuff, not short it. And I'm not saying they don't short things. They do. But mostly they go long, okay? There's nothing weak about this market, and I can't talk anymore about it. I'm losing my voice. All right. I'm going to let everybody go today. Good video here. Good day. Congratulations, everyone that stayed with Khan. Beautiful trade. We'll look to repeat the same thing tomorrow. I'm looking for quality. There are some picks I like. I put them in the room. Stay focused. Take your ego out of the equation. You got two choices. Just listen to everything I say and suck it in like a sieve and don't even analyze it. Or think about what I say. Analyze it. Take your ego out of the equation. Or close your eyes and press the button and hit the train and don't even think about it at all. <laughs> Those are your options. <laughs> the be confident. Have conviction. Do not be egotistical. The market's going to make a new high. I will see everybody tomorrow. Have a great day. All right. Good job. You're welcome. For all you, check on your ECNs. Okie dokie. Have a good day, everyone.